Um, we looked at the medium setting, and that's essentially sort of a carbon copy of the top, uh, with the exception of the top would have uh, modified the slew uh, equally on both the rise and the fall, but we were kind of doing one at a time. Uh, I'm not going to jump too much into the low parameter, but I do want to take a look at the high. So let me flip over to the high, bring this down to zero right there. And then let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So I'm going to take this out. Or actually, I already have that patch. So let's take a look at our oscilloscope. And if you take a look there, we pretty much have kind of a shape that is not really what you expect. If you look at our original waveform, we have kind of a square wave. And if we go over to the medium setting, we actually have the square wave. Flip over to the high, now we get kind of an odd shape, almost like a triangle wave that's gone a little bit out of control. So let's actually hear what that sounds like now. So let's patch our VCO back and go right there. Oh, sorry, go right there. A nice little rumbly type effect. Let's hear the medium one again, so we can have a sort of a frame of reference. And look at our oscilloscope, that's our square wave. Let's flip over to the high setting. Now let's adjust the rise time a little bit. Eventually my waveform might disappear as the oscilloscope kind of struggles to keep up with it. Now what I might need to do, uh, and it kind of warns about this in the manual, um, is if sometimes your frequency doesn't match up, then the high setting won't necessarily be as effective. So I'm gonna tweak the, tweak the frequency a little bit. And then we're getting a little bit smoother of a change. Let's hear what that would normally sound like in the medium setting over here. Now let's flip over to the high setting again. Now if we look at the oscilloscope, we can't really see very much there. Let me try and zoom out a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. There we go. Now I'm gonna adjust the fall time now. I'm going to wait for it to update. Might take a second or two. There it goes. Going down the fall a little bit. I'm going to bring up the rise a little. So eventually you can shape it, mold it, bend it to whatever type of signal that you want in your patch. Okay. We're gonna take a look at one more waveform before we go much further. So let's look at the bottom waveform, the saw wave. I'm gonna need to change my oscilloscope back let me flip back through those settings. Now I'm back at 50, which is where I was originally. Bring my frequency back up. I need to flip back to medium so I can see my waveform in a normal way. There we go. Let's look at our oscilloscope. You should remember this a little bit. It's kind of a nice shape of a waveform. Nice little edges right there. Okay, so let's adjust this. Let's bring up the rise time. There we go. Very different type modulation. And sounding very different too. Let's bring up the fall time. Or sorry, the, yeah, that's right, the fall time. Okay, 
Got a nice curve that ends right there. I'm going to bring up the fall time a little higher and the rise time a little higher. Very different than what we had before. This is our original again. Okay, let's just experiment a little bit and go over to high setting. I don't know if this is going to be very effective, but let's take a look. Okay, actually not bad. So you can really see the nice curves there. And this is with no uh, modulation going on, or relatively none. There was a little bit on the bottom one, but... This is with no... Um, change happening for the most part other than you know the slew is now affecting the time range of the waveform itself so now let's modify it a little bit let's shape it it can be really hard to see on this let me zoom back out on my oscilloscope so we can get a better view of that i need to wait for a moment for it to come back up And that's a relatively slow signal. There we go. That's a nice little curve. I'm going to bring up my fall time a little more. And there we are back to square one. So I'm going to unpatch this. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this section right here. Uh, I know we kind of jumped around a little bit, uh, so hopefully we were able to stay on track since sort of the the main purpose of this, not necessarily, uh, we're not necessarily showing the most musical examples again. Uh, we're just kind of looking at behavior, kind of looking at what's happening, uh, getting an idea of what this module is doing when it's processing. Um, so that way we can gain a better understanding of sound and you know, how it behaves. Um, at any rate, in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at an example incorporating a sample and hold. So we're going to be doing what would be in sort of musical sections uh, known as portamento. Uh, and we're going to be looking at how that affects uh, the same type of idea. So we're going to have our voltage controlled LFO acting as a trigger, just give you a little preview here, trigger, and then we're going to be sampling our noise going into there. We're going to take that and go over to our standard VCO, and uh, basically we're going to get pitches, we're going to hear it, and we're going to go from there. Um, I think we're done with the oscilloscope views, although don't quote me on that, we might throw one in a little bit later, um, but we're going to kind of see a more standard example of where you would see a slew limiter, so please stay tuned for that should be interesting and keep on patching.